I'm Louis Beaver and I'm a photographer. What taking pictures began when I was 11. My grandfather gave me his old film camera and I tried, basically tried to shoot a roll of film and then as you, you know with your first film camera, a lot of it's just toss and out of pure stubbornness over years and years and years, I wanted to learn how to use the camera. And by the time I learned how to use it, I realized that I love photography. I think traveling around helped because you have to meet people all the time and you're put into new, I guess, environments. So I mainly specialize in like portrait photography. So approaching people, getting to know people when taking a portrait is, I find, a lot easier because I've been so used to every two years going to a new school, moving into a new house that meeting new people for the first time and you know feeling comfortable in front of them it doesn't seem unnatural to me I can't get it look at that how cool is that it's good isn't it <laughs> it's awesome yeah 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 I love it love it my grandpa was uh the biggest influence because he gave me my first camera so I guess he was the the individual that sparked you know the love for photography and all these sorts of things but Looking back at like my mum's really into art and around the like the houses that we lived in, she would have prints by Omri Cartier Bressard or Willie Roddy. All these things being plastered around the house, you kind of probably get subconsciously, it gets somehow penetrates into your practice and what attracts your eye and what catches your eye when taking pictures. But with the the work in Paris, I my dad was based out in Paris. I put a, a, a shout out on, there was a website called The Basement at the time. And I said, looking for, you know, skateboarders to go and take pictures of. And I'd always loved these old paintings of dramatic, I'd say dramatic paintings of monuments with the Eiffel Tower in the background and overly romantic and a bit cheesy. But how could I do it like that in a way that would be more interesting to me and that would be a bit different? And I thought, well, why not get this? skateboarder going through the this I guess this stereotypical Parisian monument picture but then you've got a skateboarder wearing a I don't know Netherlands football top coming through or somebody ollieing outside the Louvre and so that was the first time I thought oh wow this is my first proper I guess an ongoing series where it's a body of work and I thought oh I'm gonna keep doing this and that's when I really I've always been into photography, but I really got into it at that point. Well, it's that one where Nat and Elle's going like that, and you got the oh, I was, I love. Do you know what I took that picture ten years ago? And, you know, lots of we were chatting about this earlier when they're like, "Oh, I hate my old work." I still look at that picture, and think that's pretty good actually. Quite happy. I wouldn't change anything about that picture. But I think yeah, everyone has that one picture. So my photography's developed from Paris in so many ways because I find that the the more you learn about photography, the more you realise that you know nothing about it. Like there's so much to learn, and I remember when I was I didn't know enough about it because I did I just used to stress out about using my equipment, about what people would think about my images. I mean, already when you're about 18, you're so self-conscious. You like you don't really know who you are or what you enjoy taking pictures of. You just think well. I'm going to, you know, take pictures that I like and hope for the best. But you take criticism really seriously. That's one thing I've realised because you're not confident in yourself. So somebody could take a picture of like people. I mean, you always get to get your work criticised. But someone would say, this is shit or this is rubbish or I'm not happy with this image or this is wrong. And it would honestly, I would be not upset, but I would be mildly enraged, I think. I guess the main thing I've realised is learn your equipment, you become more confident. Over time, as you get older, you know, having that confidence, you don't take criticism that badly because you think, well, I like it, so I couldn't care less. Um, and also you stop following trends. You become, you, I think the most important thing is that I've learned is identity within your work. And that's the thing that makes you stand out. I mean, you could have the best camera in the world, you could have a great style, but if you're shooting like anybody else, and you're shooting things that you, you're genuinely not that fussed about, you're not going to enjoy it really. Because we have two, that we've got both of these. That one makes more sense because you can see both of the badges. I really, I like the close ones because you can see why I want to do that. 
do PSG and Marseille. I think I've got a white Marseille. Do I have a white Marseille? There it is. There you go. I think well, the current project that I'm doing is obviously the flat 92, painting, people. But I think slowly, I mean, the, I don't know if you've noticed with my web, a lot of it's to do with objects as well. So you've got the art, like, say it's like an Arsenal mug, recreating these still life things. So a lot of the work, it, I mean, it started just with portraits with the football shirts. And then the paintings came in. And that seems like the paintings are slightly taking over because it's like now I'm bringing obviously the portraits into it, matching them up with the the football shirts. But also I think, oh, that mug looks like this mug and it's still life. And then I can replace that badge with a football like rosette or something like that. Yeah. And then Danny, you are right. Sweet. And I will tell you what I'm going to be doing with your hands. So t have a seat, Bart. Close your eyes. No, too weak, clear hand. The build up to it has been quite interesting because it's not like most conventional, I guess, portrait sessions. So I thought, well, to save money, I'm going to use the corner of my bedroom as a makeshift studio. And then also shooting in someone's flat doesn't make it feel like a photography job or a, you're taking part in a project. It feels like you're popping over, having a catch up with a mate and then taking a couple of portraits at the same time it's a bit close together yeah that's better yeah 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 because they're slightly touching yeah because you can you see they're slightly touching but they're not there you go oh that's lovely chat and then hold that for me please where the project's going i'm i'm probably going to do it until like any project you do it until you get bored of it really and it's been god nearly two years now of doing it i'm yet to be bored but the problem is is that i really enjoy doing it it fills me I guess with confidence, but it, I guess it makes you, may, makes me happy doing the project. So until it stops making me happy, then I'm probably going to keep doing it. Two, one, splashy work chats. Although the football collecting was a hobby, now integrating the photography into it is the same thing. So I get to document, you know, the, the, the football shirts that I collect, but also it makes me, or well, keeps me enjoying photography like I used to. Bloody awesome. Right. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Three. Ooh, definitely not shooting you that. Shoot you at five. Shoot you at eight, I'd say. No, shoot you at 5.6. Three, two, one. This is where I'm going to be completely honest, because this is the one thing that irritates me where, I mean, we were discussing this earlier where, I mean, Instagram, social media, it's one of those platforms where people are trying to create an image of themselves where, how they want to be perceived. So you'll I go on Instagram and I see, we were chatting about this earlier about a photographer videoing his assist, like five assistants changing rolls of films and 23 cameras, or a photographer holding up a bag of 500 rolls of film, which I just think, and it's funny because you go on their Instagram, there's, the work's not there. Where is the work? <laughs> I don't think it's that hard to take a picture. And I know that sounds quite snobby. If you get to know your camera and where, you know, the settings you like shooting in, it's actually really easy to take a picture. Really, isn't it really? I don't understand how film photographers be like, oh, it's really complex, you know, shooting on a film camera. I mean, if you look at the RZ67, all you need to know is aperture and shutter speed. That's all we, I mean, it's the easiest thing in the world. And so I don't get why you get these photographers who, you know, rock up onto set and people are like, oh my God, it's so complicated. But compare that to a digital camera where you've got like white balance and all these mad settings. I mean, I go into digital cameras and I have no idea what's going on. It's interesting when people ask where, which studio I use and who's doing the styling and da da da, which I think is, it's quite funny because it, they just wear football shirts and it's all shot in the corner of my room and all my backdrops are bought off eBay for a tenner each. As long as you've got a camera that you enjoy shooting on and you've got a bit of space uh, where you feel comfortable shooting people, then it's really not very hard. So probably don't listen to any of these photographers trying to complicate something that's not really that hard. Just learn how to use your gear. I've only ever had photography as a hobby. So I've only ever done it because I've enjoyed it. And then I've only ever, because when money's not involved, you just take pictures of whatever you want, really. And if you're confident enough, you think, well, you know, I like football shirts or say if it could be, you could be into stamp collecting 
and volleyball you know and if you enjoy taking pictures of that or you know take pictures of trades stick to doing that because then you'll enjoy it more because people just forget i think the problem is with social media people measure how good they are as a photographer by how many likes they get which is just toss isn't it, 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 it that's ridiculous because i see i mean uh, th there's no such thing as a bad picture there but there are lots of mediocre ones and the thing is i'll see loads of mediocre pictures who've got millions of followers and da -da -da, millions of likes and it means nothing really so my biggest concern is you see young people who think well to become a successful photographer i need lots of money that's uh, evidence that you need to be getting all these jobs you need to have lots of followers you need lots of likes which is irrelevant because i think my biggest fear i mean you know touch when it ever happens but it's losing you know my passion for photography because it's the you know it's the thing that makes me happy so i think to anyone that's younger just take pictures of whatever you want really learn how to use your equipment don't do it at university unless do it for a, a master's i would recommend it doing it as a master's because you get to do whatever you want really whereas when you're an undergrad you're you're told what to do this is a pro you're doing a project on this and I couldn't think of anything worse if you said to me, right, sack off the football shirts and, you know, sack off shooting the way you shoot. I want you to go and take pictures of influencers around Shoreditch. I just would hate it. And if I did that for long enough, I'd probably get sick of photography. So I think my main thing is, my, I've said this earlier, but just take pictures of what you want, really, and have the confidence to just keep at it because there will be people who say, why would you take that picture? Why are you doing this way? This is wrong. This is right. When the there isn't really a right or wrong answer in taking pictures just enjoy it really that's the main thing and you know don't get bored of it <laughs> no sign off just yeah thanks for having me there you go thank you very much do one of those peace out things or you know with those like jd adverts for the kick